Hi, amigos, amigas, amigues. Welcome to KEXP. I'm your host, Alvina Cabrera. You can find us at 90.3 FM Seattle, where the music matters, donde la música importa, and streaming worldwide at kxp.org and in our free mobile apps. All these sessions are possible by donation from people like you. So thank you so much for your support. I'm here again in my favorite place in the world, the live room, to introduce a band that is going to be your new favorite band. And uh, we're going to listen to some uh, post-rock, but also some uh, roots from Latin America. So welcome, Kildro, a KEXP. How are you? Good. How are you? Ready? Ready for the session? Nice. Perfecto. Listos. Estamos. Kildro, live on KEXP. We'll 
you think and you don't understand Your love is bad as good as red Seeing your hearts don't you forget Where you are to where you rest All that's best to what comes next
orquesta. Seven. 
Kiltro, live on KXP, and that was awesome. Fantástico, maravilloso. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. <laughs> How do you feel after the session? We feel good. We feel really good. Yay. I love it. Thank you so much. Kiltro is here. Uh, you played like a mix between Underbelly, which is your latest album, and Creatures of Habit from 2019. And I would like to start with that, if we can describe the different identities, because I know that Underbelly was composed like during the pandemic, right? That's right. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. a very different process. And if you can describe like the musical identity from Underbelly, what could you say about this current moment of Kiltro? Yeah, I think it was very much um, defined by the context in which it was made, which was a pandemic. Um, you know, we're all inside and we'd meet up and have our kind of quarantine pod and stuff, but it was largely composed, you know, in my house and recorded in my house. And we did some vocals in, in Los Angeles with a producer named Kyle Smith. Um, but most of the work we did, uh, yeah, at home. And so I think it was very much a process of, it, we didn't have the kind of negotiation that we did with the first album with the audience, right? Because we could bring those songs out and sort of get a sense of what was happening. And I think it's just that feeling of, showing anyone something that you've made and then, you know, it sort of starts, you become very aware of things that you could do to it. And, and so in that sense, it was like a dialogue, I think that was happening. Um, and of course in quarantine, we didn't have that option. So I think there was many options and many things. So I had that kind of option anxiety of like, we can go in so many different directions and I can do so many different things and I want, really wanted to produce this one. Um, so Will and I spent a ton of time on the details, which is both great, but also really bad for, for us, I think, because we're very perfectionistic, but Um, but yeah, and I think it also gave us this structure that allowed us to pursue various ideas to their natural conclusion, even things that we might not have done on the first album. So this one's definitely more, I see it as a lot more abstract and definitely more sort of introspective and internal. And I think that was a state of mind that we were all in, you know, everything kind of fell away. And then what's left, I think, <clears throat> is just sort of what's already there. And so I think it's a lot about, you know, about that, about kind of what wells up when everything goes quiet. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say that was kind of a big theme on the album. Yeah, and I think from my perspective, like Underbelly made made me travel, you know, like <laughs> just Good. in my head. And uh, that is important because um, in in the story of the band, especially you, uh, Chris, that you are Chilean-American and you can feel that influences uh, growing up between both cultures and you can feel that experimental texturas, but at the same time, the roots of Latin American legends. You know, I know that Violeta Parra is there, but also Atahualpa. And I was born in Mendoza, Argentina, which oh, is cool. very, very close very to close Valparaíso. To Valpa, yeah. And I would like to, yes, to, to start with Valparaíso, because I know that is one of the reasons why Pietro was born. Yeah. So I'd been, I'd been living in Valparaíso for a few years when I started doing, uh, writing songs for Kiltra. I'd, I'd been doing, I'd been making kind of weird ambient stuff. And I think I'd sort of lost interest in, in songs that had hooks or anything. And so I was thinking, I want to do like ambient textured things. I was listening to a lot of like Godspeed, you Black Emperor and Swans and kind of heavier, more intense things. And, um, and then I sort of swung back around and I was also writing all these, these, these kind of stories of various characters that existed in Valparaíso. Because one of the interesting things of that place, if you've ever been, I don't know, but um, yeah. there's a lot of different perspectives and a lot of different kinds of people that live there and it's kind of chaotic. Um, so yeah, it was very much baked into the identity of the music. Um, Giltro in, in Chilean Spanish is a street dog. It's like a dog, usually the kind of like a mixed breed. And, um, so the idea was to make music that, well, thematically that album, Creatures of Habit, had a lot to do with street dogs. I think they were a good analog for these creatures that are sort of moving through a place and encountering these different people that have different stories to tell. And so in that way, it's a little bit, um, yeah, it's a kind of that this fragmentary perspective of the same location. Um, and the dogs are like the vehicle of that. And, and also it works on this other level in the sense that um, our music is a mix of styles and mix of different sounds and I'm of mixed heritage. And so um, I felt like it was a label that, that allowed me to grow and change and do basically whatever was inspiring to me at the time. And um, I hope that that's kind of the ethos that we live by in the future as well. You know, it's like going forward, whatever it is that we want to do. Because at the end of the day, it's like about playfulness, you know. Totally. I think that's where all the songs come from is just like, picking up a random thing and making sounds out of it. But, um, so yeah, but Valparaíso is a really important, I think that was a really meaningful place for me. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yes. All that region has like such a great, uh, and huge 
musical scene in terms of ambient or experimental music yeah. scene is, is, is big. And uh, I love that. So congratulations for that mix because it's amazing. But I would like to know the other 50% of Kiltro's songbook, right? I mean, we were talking about this Latin American roots, but at the same time, I would like to know how did you all meet each other? And when did you start playing together? Um, yeah, so we, we met in college, Will and I did, mm -hmm. um, in Colorado. And we would just, I would just go to his place. He lived in this really cool house. You had like an SP404, which we're actually still using as a sampler on the ground. Um, and we would just record random stuff and listen to the crazy, you know, all sorts of different things. I think in that era, we listened a lot of like Animal Collective. And you showed me a ton of, of different music as well, because Will is, he has so much knowledge of, of music history and um Yeah, so I learned a lot um, just hanging out with him and, and was introduced to a lot of artists. In fact, Devendra Banhart as well. Um, but yeah, so I think that's why I started with a you know friendship. And then I later moved to Chile. Will was teaching English in Vietnam. And he moved back to the States. I was in London. And then we kind of reconnected. And I, I basically told him I was sort of tired of doing the solo thing. Because for the first couple of years, Kiltro was like a solo project. Where I did some of this looping stuff that we did today. But... A lot of it was sort of folky, intimate songs that, um, yeah, and, and, and he, he met Michael, I think, via Craigslist or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which is one of the main reasons why the people meet each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, for many reasons. Sí, totalmente. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, and then we invited Michael to play with us. It's kind of funny. Michael was a little, like, tepid to join at first, and it was sort of this one day where we needed a, a drummer, and we'd been trying out a variety of different people, and then Michael was like, well, I'll, I'll step in, and he was, like, amazing. So we were like, well, why aren't, why aren't, why aren't you know, the person? Yeah, during a show once, we threw him a shaker in the crowd and stuff, so, um, yeah, so Michael joined early on, and then he ended up moving back to San Francisco, and so we're like, all right, we need somebody for local shows, and we found Fez, who'd been in a variety of other projects and, in Denver, and so Fez is the newest member of the band. It's a um, welcome. <laughs> but he's been a wonderful addition. He's got tons of energy. Love it's it. Wild. <laughs> <laughs> so you were presented under Bailey or uh, across the country. Is that correct? You're in the middle yeah, of yeah. the tour. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Well, we actually just finished. So this was our last show of the Pacific Northwest was um, day before yesterday um, at Barboza in Seattle. And so um, we're heading back actually today. And on the 22nd, we're playing um, in Denver for kind of our, our final show of this whole tour. But yeah, it's been a couple, like two and a half months. It went by like this. It was crazy. Bueno, it's, it's incredible. The performance was great. The album is beautiful. Thank you. And uh, I, we have to make possible to go with Kiltro to Valparaíso. I think that you, you all have to play there. I would love to. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, so yeah. Valparaíso, si me estás escuchando, <laughs> so yeah, take some sure. notes. Yes, will be great. So again, thank you so much thank for you. being with us and uh, congratulations again. And I cannot wait to see you again here in the Pacific Northwest. Thank you, we'll be back. Appreciate <laughs> Much, it. Muchas gracias. Kiltro Live on KXP. And thank you for uh, making this possible. All these sessions are made possible by donation from people like you. So thank you so much. And um, we will see you next time here from my favorite place in the world, Live Room. Bye. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.